We are well into flu season, and with that comes a lot of us trying to figure out how to stay healthy and how to be proactive about it. According to Stats Canada, nearly half of Canadians have been leaning on health supplements for the express purpose of boosting their immune system. So can you boost your immune system using vitamins and supplements? Tim Caulfield is the Canada Research Chair in Health Law and Policy at the University of Alberta. He is well known for fact-checking health claims. Tim, please don't burst my bubble about vitamins. <laughs> can they amp up our immune systems? Well, first, let's just start with the idea of immune boosting. You know, it's kind of a myth, and it's not a really constructive idea. You know, your immune system's not a muscle. You know, can't make it super strong. You want to help the immune system. You want to maintain your immune system, but you really can't boost it. And in fact, during the pandemic, some regulators around the world came down on uh, entities that were marketing immune boosting uh, products. So uh, that, that terminology in itself can be really problematic. Okay, I hear you. I think my ears are wide open, but I still have lots of questions. There, there are, you know, there's endless information out there, particularly, you know, this time of year in social media about this, suggesting it can work and how to do it. it. The stuff is everywhere. Have a look at this. Orange peels contain more vitamin C than the actual orange. So I use them to make this tea that totally boosts your immune system. I'm gonna add like three cinnamon sticks because they're super antibacterial. Now you can refuse to get sick this year like me and you won't ruin your holiday. Okay, so firstly, it sounds delicious. I mean, I gotta be honest, it, it, it sounds like it might make sense, does it? Uh, yeah, it sounds great <laughs> from, a, from an eating perspective, but are you going to boost your immune system? No, and by the way, you don't wanna boost your immune system. That's anaphylaxis, right? That's an autoimmune disease. Um, there is really no, no magic to this sort of superfood idea around boosting your immune system. You do want to eat a healthy diet, and there is evidence about how a healthy lifestyle can help you maintain your immune system. And you don't want to be deficient in your vitamins, right? You know, low vitamin C leads to scurvy. But you can't sort of take extra vitamins in order to ward off these, these ailments. And, and that's really what's being marketed here. And the other really important thing to highlight is how definitive the language is. They're not saying, you know, maybe it's going to help or, you know, you might want to consider this and you'll get this marginal benefit. No, they're saying you're not going to get sick. Uh, this season if you if you adopt these approaches and, and that's misleading but just to poke at that a little bit if you're feeling run down and, and you're afraid to get sick it, it feels like such an impulse to say okay I'm just going to jack up the vitamin C maybe throw in a little something else in there so that I can ward it off it feels like an innate response are, are we just all wrong uh, you're right there, there's a real intuitive appeal to that we all know that we need vitamins uh, and, it, and it plays to what I call the more is better myth, right? We, we have to have the right amount of vitamins in our body. So maybe if I have more of that good substance, I'm going to be even stronger. And, and that's just not the case. So look, there have been big clinical trials. There have been systematic reviews on, on the relationship between vitamin C and, and fighting colds and, and flu. And, and the data is really underwhelming. There was a systematic review by the Cochrane Collaboration that found no benefit. There's been other studies that have found really modest may perhaps prophylactic, you know, preventative uh, benefit, but we're talking underwhelming conclusions here. There, there really is no, no magic. All right, let's, let's look at another very popular promise we found. It's called echinacea. It's awesome. It helps you relieve your cold symptoms in the short run and also prevents you from getting ill in the long run. It also helps fight inflammation. It aids in your body's natural immune response. This basically means that it helps stimulate your immune system. Echinacea. I mean, this is people have been using this forever. Stimulate your immune system. Is she right? Some studies again find very, very modest potential prophylactic benefit. Uh, other systematic reviews have found no benefit. So once again, I'm going to say use that that phrase: uh, um, no magic, no magic associated with echinacea. Uh, and I think it's one of those things. If it worked well, you know, there have been enough studies. We'd know. We'd know. Hmm. So some people, just, just to take this a little bit further, some are, are so very serious about this, we're increasingly seeing people talking about injecting them. So as with this person, have a look. Mm. Hit it, hit it, hit it, hit it, get it, get it. 
get it, get it, get it. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, show them, girl. Yeah, boom, boom, ba, ba. Okay, a lot of promises <laughs> attached to that, you know, stimulating the immune system, improving metabolism, et cetera, et cetera. Th these treatments cost hundreds of dollars sometimes per treatment. D do the injections meet any of the promises? Nope. And this one's easier, I think. I can be I can be a little bit more definitive. I've actually tried this for some, you know, documentary project I was on. I've tried it in a couple places and, and sometimes the promises are really clinical and other times they're more lifestyle promises. But there's really no evidence to to suggest any of those things have been um, supported. Uh, and so I, I would you if you see that kind of stuff advertised, especially around vast quantities of vitamins be very, very skeptical. How regulated or safe is this industry of health food supplements? Look, it's a, it's a huge industry, uh, you know, multi-billion dollar industry, and it's lightly regulated. And there have been studies that have suggested that uh, it needs to be regulated more. I support that. I think we need better evidence for the claims that are associated with this industry. Uh, so remember that. Remember that it's not regulated as tightly as, say, pharmaceuticals. And, and also remember studies have told us that often it's, these products can be contaminated and they don't even contain what's on, on the label. So, yeah, caution uh, is, I think, the best way forward and a healthy lifestyle. All right. You are a wise man as always, Tim. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for having me on.